All right, guys, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so like before we begin like any lectures, uh, deposits and syllabus, you guys are supposed to get that to me today. Uh, we'll be collecting that after the lecture. Um, um, also, Brandon won't be here until 6.15, but um, he'll be here. So, um, OK, so welcome to the first MicroMouse lecture. Um, I'm glad you guys all could make it. Um, just a rundown of what we're going to do today. I'm going to go over the Google folder that you guys that you guys should all have been invited to for your team. Um, kind of go over what it means to uh, do an assignment every week, how to update schematics, things like that. Um, just uh, logistics stuff. Um, then we'll dive into the power systems of the MicroMouse. And then uh, Brandon will go over how to program the Nucleo board. And we'll have uh, demo boards to work on at that point. OK, um, let's just begin with like. Um, the team folders. You guys should have been um, given access to one of these team folders. Um, does anyone not have permissions? Just message me after for their team. Um, so if you guys look inside a team, you guys will see these things. Um, the log, um, go inside. That's, you're going to be logging weekly of what work you'll be doing. Go inside the document. Uh, you'll be seeing a work log that's uh, that's assigning or recording every single task that each teammate does um, just to see if, how you guys are progressing, if you guys are having any road bumps that's for us to tell or for us to know if you guys are having trouble. Um, you'll be communicating through this log. Um, anything that's overdue, if you guys can't make an assignment or didn't finish it, let us know through this log um, or we'll be emailing you personally and no one wants to have a talk, right? Um, and then any questions or concern, right? Like if you have any midterms or finals or projects that you guys want us, uh, want us to know about so that we can be a little bit more lenient, that will go right here. Um, and you'll be creating one of these every week. And realistically, every single time you do work, you take like 30 seconds to fill this out. It should already be filled out on its own. Um, so that's the log system. Uh, let's see. Team one. OK. Um, and in addition to that, you'll be uh, putting any worksheets that you guys complete um, inside this drive. Um, I'll be giving a link out uh, to all the worksheets um, that are due. The worksheets serve to kind of um, assess your understanding of what parts you guys picked for your mouse. Um, they shouldn't take more than an hour. Um, they're just literally, if you showed up to lecture and uh, can answer why you uh, picked certain parts, um, that's, that's exactly what the worksheet is. Um, you would just create a copy from uh, the worksheet link that I send you into here and just fill it out. Um, so just as an example, uh, let's see, right up, team assignments, mouse assignments. Um, it would look something like this, right? Um, there will be some, uh, a checklist of what you need to do, a couple questions that you answer. If you show up to lecture, these should be like 30 second answers. Um, then this is the more important part of what parts you picked. Um, you want to figure out certain values of those parts. And I'll show you how to read a data sheet today as well. Um, the idea is that you need to know exactly which parts you pick and why. Because um, if you don't know that, you're putting random things on your mouse. Um, so this is just, literally, if you research your part, you can look up a chart and just put these numbers in. And then finally, some design questions. Like, um, there are certain trade-offs that you guys have. We want to know why you pick something over another, things like that. So that's the worksheets that you guys will be assigned weekly or bi-weekly, uh, depending on the week. Um, Okay, and then, so that's worksheets. Let me go back. Teams. Okay, um, so there are two other documents that you guys will be updating weekly. One is the bill of materials. So in addition to the worksheet, you'll be filling out um, a bill of materials. This will be um, what you will be using, uh, what, you, what parts you will need for the mouse. Um, as the week progresses, you will add more and more components um, that we approve of onto the sheet. We will use this sheet to pretty much order your parts for the mouse in winter. So you want to make sure that whatever you have on here is what you want. Um, and don't make any changes unless um, you go through us first, um, just in, in case you guys pick like, um, a part that wasn't approved by us or something like that. Um, other than the bill of material, um, you will also keep an updated schematic. Um, and the schematic will be done on Eagle, um, which we will have a workshop next Tuesdays for those who are unfamiliar. Um, the idea is that if you keep updating this uh, schematic incrementally, you won't have to do it all at once, like by ninth week. Uh, so, um, so that's the rundown of how you're going to be submitting uh, assignments every week. You have logs, a worksheet, 
updating your bill of materials, and then uh, updating your schematic. And you'll put it all in this group folder, um, which is shared by your team. And then we'll go through it every week, um, every weekend, essentially. So try to keep this updated. Um, it's more for you guys to assess your work and move on rather than for us to nag you. Um, all right, so let's just uh, dive right into uh, the first lecture, which is, uh, oopsies. Is there? Which is uh, power systems and the nucleo. Okay. So the overview of the power system. Um, what's it for, right? Your mouse is obviously a robot. It needs to be powered. Um, so, uh, and there's lots of components on this robot, right? Um, and each component uses a different voltage or require has different specifications, right? But they're all powered by the same battery, right? So you have. Um, Essentially, a lot of components that will uh, split the battery into different voltages, um, which are used by different components. Um, those are voltage regulators. Um, so I'll be discussing how to pick it, how to pick voltage regulators, and how to pick batteries um, for your uh, mouse. Okay. Okay. So what are voltage regulators? Um, essentially, voltage regulators um, allow to convert uh, one voltage level. To another, right? So typically on a mouse, you'll be having uh, two 3.7 LiPo battery uh, uh, voltage in series, right? Um, for those of you guys who know that series batteries aren't that great, um, that design is okay uh, for this mouse. But essentially, you have 7.4 volts, right? Um, but you need to com uh, you need to power many components that use different voltage, right? Like the MCU that you'll be working with runs on 3.3. Motors run on 5 volts, right? Um, the IR LEDs run on 3.3. So all these different voltages don't work with 7 volts or 7.4 volts, right? So we use voltage regulators to step that down to different um, voltage lines. Um, uh, so do you guys know any other ways that we might step down a voltage that you guys might have learned in classes? Um, yeah, voltage divider, right? So you guys have, why do you guys think we don't use a voltage divider in this situation? Or, yeah, so you, you, you'll be... Yeah, you'll be losing power essentially, right? Um, so these ICs um, are designed so that um, not just power, but then um, if your battery dips uh, down below uh, a certain voltage or, or fluctuates in voltage, you don't know exactly what the voltage output is, right? So these uh, ICs help regulate that. Um, so I'm going to discuss two different types of voltage regulators, um, which are linear and switching. Let's see. Okay. So linear regulators, which are the regulators we provide in the rat, um, essentially dissipate um, the voltage down, uh, or the, the energy, or excuse me, the energy down uh, via heat. Essentially, you can think of it as a resistor um, um, in which power is just dissipated through uh, heat. Um, so the reason why we gave you this on the rat is because it's a lot easier to use. You can see that there's an input, um, which is grounded uh, through a capacitor, and then an output voltage, right? So you put 7.4 in, you expect to get 5 volts out. Um, but because you're dissipating this through heat, um, essentially, uh, they're pretty much power inefficient, right? So the other option you have is switching regulators, um, which um, store energy um, or store energy for a little bit and then dissipate them um, at a lower rate so that um, uh, you don't actually lose energy um, and you still drop that voltage. Um, but as you can see from the circuit, um, they're a lot more complex to use. Um, I mentioned these two types of regulators um, uh, because the, I just want you guys to be aware of like, what's out there. Um, but most of you guys will, uh, will be working with linear regulators just because it's simpler. Um, and um, honestly, the power uh, consumption is not a big concern for MicroMouse. Okay. So, so this is, I'm going to take a step back. Um, You'll be noticing throughout uh, every lecture, I'll be uh, talking about a component, a little bit of how they work and why, um, why are, what they're used for in the mouse. And then I'll have a slide called uh, voltage or like component and then design considerations, right? So this is actually the interesting part of MicroMouse is where you have to think about why you're picking a certain component um, or why you're picking a certain type of a component. And uh, each component has certain things that you want to consider. Um, and I'll list them out like this usually for every single lecture. 
Um, and these are the things you have to keep in mind when you're picking your parts uh, for, for your mouse. Um, so for voltage regulators uh, specifically, um, there are four components that you want to be thinking about. Um, first one is max input voltage, right? Like, um, obviously a voltage, uh, a voltage regulator has a maximum input, right? If you go any higher, that voltage regulator breaks down, right? So you need to make sure that whatever battery you're using for your mouse, it doesn't exceed this limit for your voltage regulator. Um, secondly is your dropout voltage. Um, so your dropout voltage um, is uh, the difference, the minimum distance you need, or the minimum difference you need between your input voltage and output voltage. Um, so for example, if we have a voltage regulator that has a dropout voltage of uh, one volt, right? Um, and you want to output 3.3 volts, but you only provide four volts, there's only a 0.7 voltage difference, um, which is not enough for the dropout voltage. Um, and in those cases, the regulator breaks down and your output voltage is something unknown, uh, which is bad for your mouse, right? Like if you're trying to power your MCU, for example, and you don't know what voltage you're providing it, the MCU might break down. Um, so that's another consideration to keep. Um, you also have max load uh, current, right? So every single component has a maximum uh, uh, current that, it, that can come out of it, right? Um, especially, so for example, if you have a five volt regulator that is um, powering your, um, your motors, right? Motors tend to draw a lot of current. Um, if you saw a, a current, a, a motor that we gave you, it'll pull up to one amp each, right? Um, so every single component, if you draw too much amp, it'll break down as well. So that's another consideration to keep. Um, and finally, this one, um, is actually uh, pretty important for voltage regulators, especially if you're using linear, is heat dissipation. Um, because obviously when you're stepping down in energy, that energy is released through heat, right? So um, you'll find on the data sheet that at certain heats, uh, or at certain temperatures, um, the voltage regulator um, will work differently or will not work as well. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, and in certain cases, you might want to think about adding a heat sink or um, having a heatsink on, on the actual PCB itself, which we'll talk later about. Um, so these are just, uh, the compo these are the major ones that you have to keep in mind, but there are other ones, that, other considerations that you want to think about, right? Like, how are you going to put the regulator on your actual mouse, right? Like, what size do you want, or um, do you want throughput, or on the surface mount? Um, but, so I gave you a list of things that you should think about when you pick a voltage regulator, right? So um, what's a question that should come to mind? Um, if I tell you this. Uh, if there's so many configurations, then, for example, how are we going to control the max log current inside? How do we control? Um, so these components are not controlled by you. Um, they're, um, essentially, you are going to be researching parts that meet your requirements for these things, right? Like, if you know that your mouse draws two amps from motors and you're trying to find a regulator that works for the, to the motors, then you have to research and find uh, a regulator that works. You can't control that. Um, so that, that actually brings up like, another thing, right? You need to know what you, what you want, right? Like what are these values that you need? Um, so if you know that you're using two batteries, right, uh, that are 3.7 volts, what would be your max input voltage that you need? Yeah, 7.4, right? Um, or 7.5, yeah, something higher than it, right? Um, and you know, if you know that, for example, we, we were talking about motors, right? Um, if the motors draw two amp, uh, one amp each, right? So what would be your maximum load current for that? Two amps, yeah. Yeah, two amps, right? Um, so you, you need to think about it's not always about finding like the best component. Like you don't want the biggest numbers for all of these, right? Because that means it's more expensive. Um, a consideration to make is what numbers do you need for each of these? You have to think about it in like the macro perspective, um, and then figure out uh, pick pick the part that works for your situation. Um, but what I was getting at is like, where do you find these numbers, right? Like I'm just telling you, oh, think about these, right? Oh, uh, research the parts. Um, but do you guys? Um, but where do you find these numbers? How do you look up these parts, right? Um, so I'm just going to demo really quickly of like a certain process that I would go through um, when I'm researching parts um, in order to uh, keep with, uh, keeping these in mind, right? So 
We're going to examine the uh, LM7805 uh, voltage regulator, uh, which is a 5 volt uh, uh, linear regulator that we provided in the RAT kit. Um, so when Brandon was designing this mouse, or the RAT, um, he had to keep in mind um, those values that he, he needed, right? He was providing uh, 7.4 voltage input. Uh, he was drawing up to like 1.5 amps on the motors. Um, so he needed a, uh, a voltage regulator that provided 5 volts um, and could pr uh, power the motors, right? So um, we're going to um, show you the data sheet for this. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you the data sheet for this and show you how you can find these values in the data sheet. Um, okay. Okay. So say he was trying to find out a little bit more about that regulator, right? The uh, the uh, LM7805 regulator, right? Um, First, he would go to the website, look up linear regulators of some sort. Um, he would have like certain numbers in mind that he wants to keep, right? Like uh, of those uh, consideration factors that you, we want to consider. Um, then he would find the part, right? And then he would look at the data sheet, right? So I'm just going to download this data sheet, right? So this data sheet, and depending on what part you have, is this giant document, right? And at first, at least for me, when I first uh, was doing this, I was like, I don't want to read through all this, right? Um, but like, if you know what you're looking for, most of the time it's just going to be a control C, right? Which is why I gave you this list of design considerations, right? So we're going to look at this one, right? So this is a three terminal positive voltage regulator, right? You can see that the output current is up to one amp, right? We already found one, right? It's, it's most of it is going to be um, pretty obvious at first, right? So you see that now it's one amp, right? Which works for our motors if assuming that we don't stall both our motors and draw one amp at a time, right? So now we have one factor down, right? So what else do we need? Do you guys remember? Voltage. Um, voltage what? Output. Output voltage, right? Um, so this is... Actually, so, so for, for this component specifically, we, um, this is a 5 volt right here. Description is 5 volt. Yeah, so these, this is, um, so this voltage regulator um, is a series, so you have all different ones that have output different voltages. So this data sheet applies to all of them, at least like the breakdown voltage and all that. Um, so speaking of uh, breakdown voltage, or dropout voltage, um, can anyone tell me what that was? Just a quick reminder. Yeah, so you're, you're expected output voltage and your input voltage has to have uh, a difference that's big enough in order for the voltage regulator to work, right? So we should look for that value, right? Um, so let's see, low output voltage. Yeah, right here, voltage dropout, right? Literally a chart and you look at that voltage, right? You see that it is two volts, right? So if we're outputting five volts and we're providing 7.4, the difference is 2.4, right? Um, which is good, but not, you want, in engineering, you, you know, you'd rather be safe than sorry, right? So you want to find something that's a little bit better than just um, uh, 0.4 voltage, um, especially when that battery doesn't always stay at 7.4, right? But is there a maximum input voltage? Yeah, so that's another consideration factor, right? So the input voltage maximum is 35 volts. Right? You're not going to provide 35 volts here. <laughs> There's two numbers. Yeah, so... Um, feet out. So this is uh, for 5 to 18 volts, you would have 35 volts. For If you're outputting 24 volts, then you need 40 volts. Oh, what's up, Brandon? Okay, so yeah, so a lot of MicroMouse when picking parts is just going through these data sheets and looking up certain values that you're interested in, right? You keep in mind what values you're looking for and what, um, what the range uh, of your expectations are. And then you um, Google these, uh, a part that you need, find the part, look at the data sheet, make sure that those values match. Um, and if they do, you have a part that works, right? Um, and I guess you can also consider like pricing as well, right? Like there, for example, there are such things as uh, low dropout voltage regulators, right? Um, where the dropout voltage is really small, right? But if you're providing 7.4 volts and you're dropping down to 3.3, .3, do you really need um, a dropout voltage that's like 0.5, right? Um, you don't need something that accurate or, or that uh, well-designed. 
Okay, so yeah, um, that was just uh, going through what it means to read through a data sheet. When we say read a data sheet, we mean read through it, find out if these values match or not. Okay, how about heat dissipation? Okay, so heat dissipation, um, that's a little harder to quantify. Uh, usually you just know that your voltage reg regulators are gonna get pretty hot, so you try to keep them a little bit separated. Um, you might have to add some heat sinks um, usually you try to keep your voltage regulators away from, let's say, your MCU or other components that would, that would be more uh, susceptible to being overheated or, or temperature actually matters. Um, let's say we, we're going to have a gyro, right? Um, that's a little bit more delicate, um, but usually you're going to be soldering these on anyway, so they should be able to handle pretty high temperatures. Um, it's just good to um, make sure everything's kind of spread out so the heat doesn't all, like, kind of coagulate in like one spot. Um, and then when we go into PCB design, um, we realize that if you don't pick a throughput component, a heat sink isn't always possible for these. Um, and what people uh, do, um, and this will actually be in your assignment too of why people do this, um, is that they'll have um, a really large ground um, so that heat is able, a, a really large ground copper pad for that component so that heat's able to dissipate on uh, evenly out through the board. Um, but then we'll show you about, uh, we'll show you that later. Okay, so now um, let's just summarize our, our, pretty much our design process so far, right? We know what part we need, right? So right now the example is the voltage regulator. Um, we have the design consideration factors of that component, right? And then now we use Google or whatever, look up parts that match these design considerations um, that, that work for our scenario um, now we actually have, now that we picked our part, we actually have to put it on the board, right? Uh, Min, have, we sh have you shown them a DigiKey yet? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, this is, website is really, really good for finding parts. Uh, you can pretty much ask for like a voltage regulator. Um, you can sort things by um, input voltage, output voltage, um, the size of the pins, um, surface mount versus through hole, um, company that you want. Um, so this is a really good resource and I suggest you guys kind of look at this on your own. And they do have uh, links to each data sheet too, so that makes it really, really convenient. Whoopsies. My bad. So just an example of what that might look like if that ever loads. Uh. Wait for, okay, there you go. All right, so there's all these types of voltage regulators you see. Um, yeah, we're interested in linear, right? So yeah. let's go here. You have like all these um, manufacturers, packaging. Um, packaging is, actually no, that's not important. Let's see. Yeah, and then all, these are like the list of all possible parts, right? Yeah, so these are surface mount components, so these w you would solder on top of a PCB. Um, it's quite different from if you've ever seen one of those resistors. Those are through a hole, so you have two little holes, kind of like a perf board or something that you'd solder onto. So um, I guess you would just go through these uh, components, for, and like if I were to open one up or something like that, and then you can find the data sheet for that. Right, the data sheet's like right here, just click it on. Um, you see this one's a 3.3 voltage, maximum output is um, 800 milliamps. Um, and yeah. then it's an SO2 SOT223, um, which is just the uh, standard for how those pins are laid out. Okay, so we kind of talked about those values, right? So now you actually have to put them on um, a schematic, right? So um, I'm just going to give you an overview um, of what, how to find the circuit for a certain component. Um, next week, we'll be talking uh, in detail how to, find, how to uh, incorporate the part that you pick inside Eagle, which means like possibly downloading a library for the, the layout uh, or the footprints of the component you pick, putting it onto Eagle, and then drawing the circuits around. Um, that will be all detail next week. Um, but um, in terms of designing the circuit for, the, um, for your part itself, um, you won't be doing that um, because uh, whoever manufactured this component probably has a circuit 
or, or suggested circuits um, that you can use and follow um, for your actual component. Yeah, um, and don't forget to put on any little caps that they suggest, uh, little resistors. Um, these are to reduce noise, um, so definitely don't forget those. So like for example, if you look in this data sheet, um, for this voltage regulator, um, you'll see that there are a lot of circuits that um, are for this uh, LM7805, uh, right? So the typical application, which is the one you're probably after, is input and then output uh, 5 volts or whatever it is, right? Um, you'll notice that there are two capacitors that are not part of the IC itself. You'll have to include those passives onto your circuit when you draw it out onto Eagle. Um, yeah. And you'll find these circuits for um, all the ICs um, on, on the data sheet itself. But for the RAT, you don't have to worry about these. Um, we've already made the PCB, so they're already placed where they need to be. Um, for the schematic, too, um, that you, a schematic basically makes a, a, net, uh, a net list of all the components and where they need to go to. Um, so when you actually place these, that will, come, that will come when we do layout, which will be much later, so you guys don't have to worry about this. Just don't forget um, to put on these caps for now. Yeah, and also include those passives onto the uh, bill of materials as well. Uh, whatever you use, even if it's small, let us know on the bill of materials. Okay. And you can find caps and all that on DigiKey as well. Okay, so that's that present. No, oh. uh, no go ahead. Um, we also have Mauser, um, which is another parts site. Um, there's also like Aliexpress, but we don't recommend that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you may find cheaper parts on different sites. So once you pick a part, do a Google search because there might be parts cheaper elsewhere. And um, it is you guys' responsibility to find the cheaper part because the mouse will be limited by a budget, meaning that if you exceed the budget, your mouse fails because you can't, um, we can't pay for it, right? Um, so uh, I think the budget this year for the mouse, um, that's actually pending. Um, yeah. Depending on how many teams survive the rat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so preferably not, because part of the engineering design is you know you have a constraint, right? And budget yeah. is one of them. Um, I think I'm for yeah, for the competition, you're actually limited to five hundred dollars. So yeah. Um, and we're giving you well below five hundred. So yeah. Don't get too excited. <laughs> uh, so. Um, so that's pretty much it for voltage regulators and kind of like the design process of picking parts. Do, do you guys have any questions about voltage regulators or um, why you use voltage regulators? Or, um, for example, we have like, instead of using one regulator for two amp, what if we use two for one amp each? Two for one amp each? So that is uh, a possibility um, because then now you, you split the, the current into t uh, going through two components, right? So you won't be drawing two amps through one uh, voltage regulator, right? But now where's your bottleneck, do you think? So no. eventually you're drawing through t two amps from somewhere, right? So where is that coming from? Yeah, so um, which is a design consideration when you pick your battery, right? Um, how, what's the maximum draw of the battery itself? Oh, another thing to consider is that these things don't pu uh, put out exactly, f like, let's say, 5 volts. So if you have two of them hooked up in, uh, in parallel, like two 5-volt regulators, uh, and do you remember in your EE classes where um, what happens when you connect, like, a, uh, like a 3-volt uh, voltage source in parallel with a 2-volt voltage source? You can't do it because that violates the, the, the properties, right? That's going to do the same thing here. Um, you're going to get some back current through your voltage regular, and that can be pretty dangerous. You can blow it out. So I would suggest just picking one uh, voltage regulator that uh, supplies the right amount of amperage. Um, just a, a little note to add. Uh, this isn't too crucial for uh, MicroMouse itself. Um, 
especially once you start picking out your parts and figuring out um, what, what voltage provides for what component. Um, um, but voltage regulators also help clean out noise um, on, the power and ground, uh, on the power line. Um, so the idea is that if you separate uh, noisy components with their own uh, power line through a voltage regulator, uh, whatever noise is created on that line won't propagate to um, whoever's connected to, uh, will propagate to whoever's connected to that same voltage source. But if you have two, for example, uh, and one, uh, one voltage regulator powers one component and the other one powers um, another, you have a sense of isolation between the components. Um, so, but then again, there's a trade-off, right? So the more things you put onto your sheet, um, it's not just cost, but it's also, can you fit that all on a board? Um, yeah. So that's something to consider. OK. Um, so if there's no questions about voltage regulators, we'll move on to uh, batteries. OK. Uh, this is a schematic. Oh, yeah, just a quick thing. Get the pin out correctly, um, um, yeah. especially when you <laughs> lay it on the PCB and connect it, right? You want to make sure that you're connecting ground to ground, power to power, um, because that might not always be obvious. And whenever you're unsure, always refer back to the data sheet. Uh, one thing to point out too, when you guys are picking your voltage regulators, um, there will be, in Eagle, um, you can't just design just the, the, the schematic uh, footprint, you have to also design the, the PCB fo footprint. Um, don't worry about the PCB fo footprint for, for now, you can change this later. Um, if you want to make a new one, then just we'll go over that at some point in the future. Okay. All right. So batteries, right? Um, so batteries are where the power from the mouse is coming from, right? So um, the typical design for micro mouse is that you have two LiPo batteries um, in series that are 3.7 volts each, right? Which is, um, provides you 7.4 volts, right? So, and all components um, pretty much run below that voltage. So you would just use power regulars to step down. Um, so just some things to keep in mind, um, a circuit with two batteries in series isn't safe, uh, but um, for the applications that you guys are working on, that's okay, and um, any other solution is a little bit more complex than we want to make it, right? Um, just keep in mind that you want to keep your batteries charged um, at the same level um, and um, fully charged when you run it and not have one that's partially discharged and one that's fully charged. Um, so just some quick design considerations. Um, you'll find different batteries of different sizes, right? Um, and size means weight. Um, more weight means your mouse is slower or, um, or provides more traction depending on what you want. So that's just something to keep in mind, right? This is a physical battery. It's going to go on your mouse. Think about how you're going to put that battery onto your mouse. Um, there's also something called the C value um, or the C rating of a battery. Um, that essentially defines the maximum current draw of your battery. Um, and it's just going to be the multiple of your battery's capacity, um, which we'll mention later, uh, which we mentioned right now. Um, and so you have the capacity, um, which is measured in milliamp hours. Um, that's essentially how many milliamps you can draw um, so that the battery would last an hour, right? Uh, most of the time, you're going to be drawing more than that, which means your batteries will last less than an hour. Um, and so if we look, go back to the C value, um, if you take the C value and multiply by the milliamp hour, um, you'll get the maximum uh, current that you can draw through the battery before it breaks down. Um, and yeah. when I say breakdown, it means it'll expand and explode. So don't do that. Yeah, these batteries do have like a, a shorting uh, circuit in it. So it can sense if you're, you're shorting the battery, but that tends to also break the battery. So you can't really charge it up after doing that. So please, please don't short your batteries. We do have a limited number of them. So... so um, the batteries, so let, let's, let's just do a practice, right? Um, um, say the battery that we provided you was um, uh, 1,200 milliamp hours, right? Um, which is actually the batteries that we provided. But say the C value was uh, 0.5, right? What's the maximum current that you can pull through those batteries? Yeah, so which would be 600 amps, right? Now, we talked about voltage regulators, oh, right? Oh, it's a milliamp, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, 600 milliamps, right? So now, um, jumping back to the voltage regulator, say your voltage regulator can output one amp, right? Does that number even matter anymore? No, right? Because your battery can only provide 600 milliamps. So when you're picking parts, 
think about how that works with other parts, right? Do those numbers line up? Your bottleneck might not be your voltage regulator. It might be something else, like the battery. Um, something else to consider when you're uh, putting parts or batteries onto your, um, uh, onto your bill of materials, you might want a couple pair of, uh, a couple batteries, right? Because um, say you're testing your mouse, um, if it runs out, now you have to wait for the batteries to charge, right? If you have like four, then you can run two and two. Um, and then also you might want uh, two sets of batteries, one's for racing and one for uh, testing, right? Um, just different scenarios, you want different batteries. For testing, you might want something with larger capacity because you want to keep running and testing, right? Um, but you might not care about the weight as much. But with racing, um, and you'll see uh, when you do a little bit of research, there are these helicopter batteries that are really small. Um, they're really low voltage, but they'll give you one run, and they can provide up to 25C. So. Yeah. Um, also, one alternative for testing, uh, what else could you use instead of batteries uh, when you test your... Uh, your mouse or your rat. Yeah. To, to what? We have them in the lab. Yeah, you can hook it up to a voltage source and then you won't run the risk of burning out your battery. You don't have to worry about recharging it, um, but don't obviously short the voltage source. <laughs> Those are expensive. So. <laughs> okay, so um, that's that's the design consideration of batteries. Uh, something else to keep in mind about uh, batteries, um, there is a discharge curve for the batteries. So most of the time, um, if you look at this curve, uh, when you're using the battery, it will be within this range, right? Um, which is what you expect, right? At 3.7 volts, that's uh, the output that you expect. Um, if you overcharge, you'll notice, however, that um, your, vo your voltage might be a little higher than you expect. Um, and that's just something to keep in mind um, if you read a voltage that's a little um, higher uh, than expected. Um, um, but for the most part, you'll see that it stays constant or like close to constant at like the voltage that you expect. Um, except when it's fully discharged, then you see the voltage completely drop down, right? Um, what's the issue with voltage of a battery completely dropping down? Um, yeah, so if you drop down a certain level, the battery's damaged, so you can't charge it again, right? But um, What's the issue with the input voltage being too low? Um, what? Not just yeah. enough power, but like what component breaks down if your voltage input voltage is too low? Yeah, voltage regulator. Um, if now your voltage dropout um, is like, for example, uh, the voltage dropout or the regulator that we provide was um, uh, was two volts, right? Um, if it was seven point four, we're trying to power five. Um, and the 7.4 drops down to like 7 or 6.5, for example, right? Suddenly you're in that range of risk. Um, and if, you're, if the voltage regulator uh, breaks down, you don't know what voltage is being provided to those components, which, causes, uh, which might cause damage. So yeah. um, it's important to know uh, if your battery is charged or not. Yeah, most frequently uh, I've experienced that usually one battery goes out, but then the other one's still like working, so you get like 3.7 but um, obviously your, your five volt voltage volt regulator wants more than five volts. So you get really just undefined behavior in your circuit. And a lot of times you just try to, you're trying to figure out where is, where is it going wrong in my circuit? And oftentimes it's just one of your batteries. So that's something to keep in mind. So can we use the DMA to check if they have a charge? You can yeah. use a DMM, um, but we would actually, actually we would require that you guys have um, some sort of circuit that check that allows you to probe uh, what your battery voltage is, um, and there are like multiple ways um, to do this. Or there's two main ways that you can uh, do this. One is that you can use a uh, lipo battery fuel gauge IC. Um, this one uh, will give you like the state of your battery a little bit more accurately. Um, but sometimes you just care about the voltage, so you can just use a simple voltage divider yeah. um, that goes into the MCU. The MCU would read just make sure that your input signal is low enough for your MCU. Um, and, and then also for the rat, I'm going to release the, uh, the schematic and the, the layout so you guys can go over and debug everything. And uh, if you guys are having trouble, like where's, where's ground, uh, you can refer back to the, the layout and then refer, um, hopefully fix your, your issue. Because um, yeah, you expect the 3.3 plane to be 3.3 volts or your 5 volt plane to be 5 volts. So you just can check that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's all for batteries. Consider the C value, consider the capacity, 
have multiple pairs, uh, and have some form of uh, uh, circuit so that you can check what voltage um, um, is available. Like for example, if you have the voltage regulator, you can just check in the beginning of your mouse, oh, is this a voltage that I expect to read? If it's not, then um, blink an LED, and you'll know to charge your batteries. Something like that. Because when this breaks down, your mouse breaks down, and other things break that you don't want to break. Um, are there any questions about batteries? Yeah. Is too, low, so too low. Okay, so this red line you see right here, if your voltage ever drops below this line, your battery is dead. Like point of no return. Yeah. Um, which it shouldn't drop that low in the first place, but if you I don't know got too excited and decided not to charge your battery. Um, once that happens, when you try to charge your battery again um, because it's damaged, um, that's, that's a hazard because the LiPo battery is broken. Um, try to charge it again, it'll blow up or expand, um, which is a cool show, but dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. So, so why is the optimal voltage we should keep the battery? The, the voltage that... So if you notice the curve, there's a, a flat section, right? So you expect the output to be 3.7, right? Um, LiPo batteries, uh, based on their chemistry, outputs 3.7. Um, it only breaks down at the end or if you try to overcharge. Most of the time, it should say 3.7. When you see that it starts to drop, you're at that curve point. 12, so, 1,200 milliamps is actually a lot, so you, you probably won't have to charge that often, but I would recommend, like, let's say you're running your motors a lot, then I would recommend charging them overnight or something. Um, so if there's no more questions for battery, oh yeah, go ahead. Wait, so how do we know if it's overcharged? So like how long? There's a, we'll give you a charger and it has a, a sensor circuit. So as soon as it's done, it'll stop charging by itself. So you don't have to worry about unplugging it at a certain time. <laughs> um, and most of the time, if you're running this battery through a voltage regulator, the maximum voltage of, uh, the maximum input voltage of that regulator is well above that low curve anyway, so. Or should be, right? But should we use all the power before we charge it? Uh, we should just use half the power, right? If we keep charging and recharging, it the battery cap and losing the capacity. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't think you run, you discharge and charge it enough for that to be an issue, but yeah. um, it's, I mean, it's better than having the voltage be too low and then. I don't think your battery gonna, broken, right? You're probably not going to go through like a thousand charge and discharge cycles, so I think you're, you'll be fine. Um, I hope you don't go through a thousand, <laughs> at least. Maybe, okay. Um, also, don't forget to buy battery chargers on your bill of materials. You want to charge your batteries again. We provide one, uh, I think. Yeah, one. But two is nice because you have two batteries, so you can charge them at the same time. Um, so that's just something to consider on your bill of materials if you have the budget for it. Okay, um, if no one has questions for the batteries, uh, we'll talk about assignments for this week. All right, so some as assignments slash announcements. Um, there's two assignments this week. One is the mouse assignment, and the other one is the rat assignment. So mouse assignment, um, worksheet one should be up by tomorrow. Um, it will look similar to what you have, except for batteries and voltage regulators. Um, essentially list down all the values that I ask you for, um, for those two components, and then why you pick a certain part, and then maybe some theory questions. Um, um, and then the RAD assignment is just the power and uh, the nucleo, so all you have to do, or, okay, so the first thing you, you guys are gonna have to do is uh, drill press um, some uh, holes into the PCB because you guys are gonna need some motors, motor mounts. Um, that one, you got to be pretty precise. If you don't know how to use a drill press, um, all the officers should know. So um, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, make sure you wear the safety glasses. Um, yeah, and then don't, um, don't drill press outside of the, the little keep out area that I, I have on there, because um, you might go through a, a trace, and then there goes your PCV. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's always fixes around that. You can do, do a jumper wire, but yeah, try to st stay within that little keep out zone. Um, and then after that, you guys are gonna solder on the, the battery JST connectors, um, 
the voltage regulators, the headers for the Nucleo, and then um, some other headers for other breakouts for programming it if you don't want to always jump over to it. Um, another quick side note is that for the Nucleo, we are going to ask that you break it apart. Um, so um, there's a, a programmer that comes with it. Um, so you guys are going to break off that programmer and then do jumper wires over. Um, we, we have the pinout uh, of that and pretty clear instructions. But if you have any trouble, um, don't hesitate to ask. It can be kind of difficult because um, um, also there's the data sheet for the Nucleo um, that has basically all the instructions how to break off the, the programmer and jump to it as well. Um, we'll be emailing you the uh, links to these assignments. so. Uh, don't worry about it. It should be up by tonight. Um, two other things. Uh, like we said, there's going to be an Eagle workshop next week. If you guys don't know how to use Eagle, um, this, this is really crucial for you guys to yep. come to this one. How many um, of you guys have used Eagle before? Okay, okay. so, yeah, I, so I, I most of you guys to be here. Yeah. Um, um, it's not too, too intuitive, so you can try to figure it out on your own, or I can just show you guys. Yeah. So. We'll have a write-up, but then be there um, because we'll be doing it live and we'll be building the power systems of the rat with you guys so it'll be a good way to for you guys to learn how to build the power system um, for your mouse itself which is also due with the worksheet um, and also your bill of materials and um, the schematic yeah um, also yeah but when's the eagle um, the Tuesday yeah Tuesday the Okay. We haven't booked the room I think it's, for the time yet? We'll, we'll send out an email. Um, I think it's tentative to be Maxwell um, from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, another thing, um, if you guys don't have soldering experience, there is a solder workshop um, hosted by the uh, uh, workshops uh, board of IEEE uh, on the 10th uh, from 5 to 7 in the SEC. So if you guys don't know how to solder, now is a really good time to learn. Uh, also, before the workshop, try to download Eagle 7.6.0 before you show up. That'll be very helpful, so you don't have to download it while you're there. Download and install it. Um, we'll send out an email for that. Yeah. Um, so I guess now we can go over the Nucleo. Yeah. Um, okay. Actually, time so is. the second part of this lecture is going to be um, kind of like a Nucleo embed tutorial. Um, we'll be showing you guys how to work with the Nucleo board. Um, itself and how to flash code onto it. Um, uh, if you guys don't know, embed is an online IDE uh, that's used to program this Nucleo board. Um, it makes it really easy for you guys to share projects with your team. Um, and there's a nice library to program the Nucleo as opposed to programming the MCU bare bones. Um, and I guess um, Yeah, so right now just go to uh, embed dot com I think I don't know what it is yeah um, do you want to show it onto your yeah sure okay so I only brought five uh, nucleos so if you guys could just um, uh, actually let's see let's see how it's the best way to do this um, just get into five groups yeah get into five groups um, and then now that let's see um, but have one person of each team try to make an embed account right now um, at least one person. You guys can have separate, separate accounts, but it's kind of easy if everyone's on the same account. Okay. Actually, Ben, I think how we should do is um, show them how to write code, and when they're ready, they can flash it onto the MCU. Okay. okay. We'll just do a key like that. All right, so everyone make an embed account. Guess what is this? Okay. Yeah, I'm coming here now. Um, so, I guess I'll just hand this uh, And then, Wait, you guys can uh, make a. Uh, you guys go to sign up. Min, Min, I'm just going to use your computer. Okay. Uh, actually mine. Oh, that's yours? Yeah. Sit, can I use it? I'll get it set up. Uh, I'm head out, guys, but um, if you guys have any questions about the lecture or any concerns about MicroMouse, feel free to email me or Brandon. I think Brandon will be here to do the thing with... Uh, He's going to get you money, so... That's nuclear, right? Really yeah. More money means uh, more for your mouse, right? <laughs> I totally forgot. Anyway, uh, actually... Yeah. All right. So you go to embed. 
Ouais. Go to compiler. Uh, and then you guys are going to make a. You guys go to sign up. But. Uh, Okay. And you may have to select a new platform. So. Okay. So, uh, is everyone? Did everyone make an account you, already? I think you have to do the um, thing with. Uh, okay. So you import what you guys the need to do is nuclear, you right? Go to, go to How do you do that? <laughs> I totally forgot. And then. Uh, right, I, I actually. Nucleo F four eleven re. That's not mine. Um, but. This can be really uh, anything you want. You can do the uh, embed OS blinky LED. And then you hit OK. Libraries. And then I think search for embed, I want to say. Yeah, blinky yeah, LED. Yeah, maybe. Or ST. Was it? I think it was STM. Nucleo F4. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not it. No, it's a library. Try it's, you have to add it through something so, else. Brian. Do you remember how to add the nucleo to the? Yeah. It's not this. Dude, it's been so long. It, you do a new. You go to hardware. Or okay. So. And your platform. And you may have to select a new platform. So. Okay. So, is everyone? Did everyone make an account already? Um. Okay. So what you guys need to do is you you go to up here and you go to new. And then uh, platform, you select that. Right yeah. Nucleo F411 RE. Whoa. Wait, it's an actual um, this can be really anything oh, you want. Yeah. We can do the uh, embed OS blinky LED. Yeah, there we go. All right. And then you hit OK. Yeah. Yeah, blinky LED. So actually, before you okay. go to the compiler, uh, go to you go to STM. Microcontroller. And then you find the this one, the Nucleo so F411 RE. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Nucleo F411. Click on it. So you're gonna go to hardware and then boards. Yeah. So you go. So from the beginning again, you go to embed, right? You so from here you search for developer. This is not the developer. Sorry. Yeah, you go to hardware boards. Above. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yes. And I suggest that everyone does this Whoa. on their computer at some point. Wait, it's an actual redirect. Um, and then I think ST I at microcontrollers. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Alright. And then, and then you're here. looking for the yeah. I'm quick show, I'll probably. ST or the Nucleo F four eleven RE, which is this one. And then right. you need to add it to uh, your no. new developer. So you get a STM <laughs> microcontroller. And then find F And then you find the this one, the Nucleo F four eleven RE. All right. Uh, did everyone get this or who's yeah. who still having all the issues? Is everyone everyone good? Click on it. All right, so we're gonna go to the compiler now. And then, yeah. You just click compiler. Yeah. How do you add so it? So you go. So from the beginning again, you go to embed, right? You go to hardware or developer. Developer. This is not the developer. Yeah, you go to hardware boards. And I suggest right. that everyone does this on and their computer at some point. Um, and then ST microcontrollers. Hit new. And then you select And then you're looking for the what we just ST or the Nucleo F four eleven RE, which is um, this one. Template. Um, and then you need to add it to your, OS, Blinky, your LED, developer. World. And then hit But okay. mine is already added, so All right, uh, did everyone get this, or who's, who's still having a little bit of issues? This is everyone, is, everyone good? This is what we just made. All right, so we're going to go um, to the compiler now. 
You just click compile. Yeah. So at this point, we have the. How do you add it? The, uh, the programmer still on it right here. Um, some of yours will uh, already be broken off, but don't worry about it. Uh, everyone has to break it off anyways. And then if you're logged in, if you scroll down on that page, it should say add to your compiler. All right. And then you go to new. All right. Once you plug it in, uh, you got to hit. There's a compile. Hit new. And then you select your platform, is. which is what we just picked with the Nucleo F411 um, RE um, template, um, okay. embed OS Blinky uh, LED Hello World. If you have Windows at this point, uh, and then hit download okay. uh, a .bin file, and you can just drag and drop that onto your uh, your Nucleo. It should pop up once you plug it in. But um, and then this is this is what we just file. made. Um, and then. So at this point, we have the the nucleo with the uh, the programmer still on it right here. Um, some of yours will already be broken off, but don't worry about it. Uh, everyone has to break it off anyways. So that's actually kind of a cool feature. So once it's actually finishes downloading, so in my download, you can actually see down here it mounted as a node F411. So right here, this is basically where you can. All right. Once you plug it in, uh, you got to hit. So here it's a compile file. So I could simply there it is. Drag that Thank file you. into the Um I don't know how to do this for Max. Yeah. It's light here will also okay. flash red in. Uh green. for it's if you have Windows at this point, and then it'll, uh, it'll download so uh, a dot bin file, file and you can just so you can see drag and drop that onto your uh upload all the code for Your Nucleo. It, it should pop up once you plug it in, yeah. but um, it's just honestly, it's the same way with the Mac. Yeah, so, You'll basically, uh, it'll download a file, and when you plug in this nuclear, it's called the ST link, is this little bottom part you break off, which is the programmer. The programmer actually mounts as a drive within your um, computer. So whatever file you try to drag into drive, it's gonna basically scan that file and then upload it to the um, STM32. So that's actually kind of a cool feature. So once it's actually finishes downloading, so in my download, you can actually see down here, it mounted as a node F411. So right here, this is basically where you can drag the, the downloaded file. Yeah, really. So here, it basically downloads a .bin file. So I could simply drag that file into there. You'll see the just kind of pass around. light here will um, flash red and green. That basically is showing you it's uploading, and then it will upload. So you can see the... LED is flashing on this board, so you can see if you successfully upload it. So I can upload all the code for Microsoft. For the right, at least. Yeah. Here's um, also another one. Who doesn't yeah, so uh, if you guys want to come by and get some... We'll have uh, to make sure that you can return back to the front of the deposits. Um, so that way you can just kind of not waste your time and kind of explore. So, you know, yeah. So yeah. This one wants. <laughs> yes. Should have six actually. This one. Yes. And yeah, it's it's not too too bad, but Yeah, it should be like a driver. Alright. Ayush. How's it going? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, let me pull that up. And if your team doesn't have one but has your deposit, uh, and come up here. Should I take this thing off now? I think. Yeah. If you Venmo, please put your name and team number so Ted could do it. And don't worry about Mark Mark Venmo. Ted will do it all later. Today. It's all on down here. It, I should play at UCLA. And also return your signed uh, syllabus if you have it. We'll just step part of stack right here. Alright, um, wait, uh, what's your team? I lost one team, never. Are you playing? John, Ray, and Daniel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Alright. Don't worry about these. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, if you're giving cash, and if you Venmo, just put your name and team number. Yeah, pay by cash. By cash. Uh, who's on your team? Team 10? Team 10? It's down here. The Venmo is down here. Okay, it's uh, Tyson, or actually I think he's not on your team anymore. Team 9. Team 9. Parth and Udayan? Yeah. Okay. Yes. If, uh, All right. my teammate, one of my Do you have your cell phone? Do you know what? Okay. Uh, I just bring it by. Is the puzzle one for the dollar? Is that possible if I join another team? Uh, yes. Um, just email Brandon and Mitt, and they'll try to get you on the other team. So there'll be other teams that drop. So my time is very stressful. It's pretty okay, easy early on. Okay. So, okay. yeah, just give me a quick message if you want to email them. Okay, so that would be also Brandon and Mitt. If there's another team you know you want to join, you guys maybe do that. Or you guys yeah, I don't know if you know anybody else. Yeah. But it definitely yeah. is possible to reach other teams. Like, we're very flexible. Because like, I, I haven't had my another yeah. teammate yet, and well, I don't know what we'll 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 Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we'll yeah, and we'll bring it on and we'll do it. Okay. Um, 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 okay. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, so for the work next week, um, is there any, like, sign-up for those? Uh, no, it just shows. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Do well, you guys want to do the writing? Do you guys just be assigned? Will we? 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 I mean, like, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, last year, last year I was stuck in the so it's like, uh, yeah. it's like a backup class. Yeah, just this thing, I hope. I mean, I guess if this doesn't work. Do you ever pay separately? Just make sure you make it clear in the yeah. description. Um, like, is, your, is your team clear? Okay, uh, it would be great if you guys could all just play at the same time. Just pay some of them. And just put your team name in. Your name and your team name. So you just leave that in. Alright, nice to see you. Do you have your syllabus? Give me your syllabus. Syllabus? Can you mark this off? Yeah. The syllabus? Did you sign the form? <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So That's it. Awesome. Uh -huh. I'll take money. Team 20? Okay. Okay. Wait, I didn't 
Did your team already pay it? Yeah, did your team? Who else is on your team? Okay. Uh, I even want you guys on for some reason. Do you know if any of them are in the game? Okay. Maybe. Alright, I think, yeah. Okay. Alright, tell me about that. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay, so, uh, two of us, uh, uh, so third uh, person draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I can also find two. Was it that one? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Actually, if you want to bring her. Yeah. Okay. But she has a few. Yeah. Um, it's one not with you. Alright, I'm not going to mark you guys off for now. I'll try. Wait, what? Um, yeah, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's uh, right here. Right here. So, but if you do it, it's going to be Oh, really? Yeah. Like, if we manage to, like, make the project, we'll Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if they get their deposit back, Yeah. I don't know. After I connected, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Did you download it, the file? Download the file, yeah. okay, no. Download the file? From the file. It's gonna mount as a drive, so in Finder. Let's see how it does. The file you get in probably downloads, you're just gonna do a little drag and drop into here. Wayne? Okay. How do you, do, how do you download the file? Did you? No, I didn't. Okay, so you're gonna press compile. Oh, wait, yeah. And it's gonna make a file and download it. Oh, okay. Uh, there's another team. Uh, yeah. Try to find a uh, right now. So yeah. uh, okay, so we downloaded it. Uh, that you that oh, you're just trying to keep it up, so that's why I tried it in. Try to try to get in contact with me. If you do file new or just a blinky poke. You team three? Yeah, I'm not sure either. Oh wait, wait. No, oh, wait, sorry. I was, I was thinking of team ten. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, okay. I don't even understand how Venmo works. So I have the bin. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if I can use it. Yeah. Drag it to oh, where? Oh, to the... Um, the um, I know what whatever it, actually, it mounted. Yeah. Yeah. So you see how you mounted well, then? Yeah. It, it acts like a drive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Wait, what are you going to do? Like, what's the step off of the bin? You, you, have, you have it and then you drag it into the um, nuclear, it mounts like a disk drive. It is. If you only have this, this is the one we can And then it is already loaded. Yeah. Wait, what? Okay, so, so I have big money right now? No, it's working. Oh no. That's perfect. Exactly. Oh no. Yeah, we dragged it and it went out. So what's going to happen here? So did you paste it? Yeah. Uh, did this link? <laughs> didn't even see that. Or actually, do what this team did. What did this code too, though? Didn't even see. It's just true. Oh, so it has to. <laughs> Here, try to download it again and then put it okay. drag and drop yeah. again. the bin file. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's doing that. So, uh, they'll be in the lab and they'll always stay in the lab. Okay, they'll stay in the lab. Yeah. Right. So, uh, we're working on this as we go. Also, one other note, make sure the kits stay in the lab at all times. That's kind of a rule with MicroMouse, all the kits stay in the lab, so just you can work in the lab, just don't take kits outside.
I do have a five. So is this every year? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else want to try or you come with me? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Can you help me find a five in here? Oh, you need a four. <laughs> yeah. I like to see when you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm 100 people. Our, our teammates. Right. Oh wait, a hundred. Oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> Actually, believe it, I used to. I used to join. I took. Did he get a treasure? He was hundred. Uh, I just sent him. I don't know. 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 I don't we just don't have yeah. one. Okay, yeah, we have um, a hundred. I like uh, three paint brush. I'll get it fifty and one by other. Yeah, just make sure you make it clear. Okay. Or or you can make sure he marks down that much. Or I can then yeah. yeah. we can give you uh you can Venmo us five and we'll give you uh you give a hundred, right? Uh -huh. And we'll give you forty. <laughs> or no, thirty. Uh, okay. okay. So, okay, we're not, we're not going to move Yeah. Okay. So, the 150 used to be the mouse, yeah. right? Not the rat. It's a combination. It's outlined yeah, so in the field, that's how you get it. Like but, like, what's the thing after yeah, you should do, uh, What's about the competition? What's that okay. thing about? Just make sure you mark down. Yeah. What's the compet competition? Mm -hmm. Wait, why do we not have any tents? Um, what do you mean? Oh, the compet <laughs> yeah, that's for the uh, mouse. Here, 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 here. Not for the rat. Yeah. There'll be a competition in the fall for the rat. So, 70. Or sign so. Nvidia, would you? Yeah. Awesome. No. Four. Um, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll Do you know your team? Now, I can get you. Good, but, um, Did yeah. he give you your email answers. or no? Yeah, I have uh, Do you remember what team you guys were? When did you email Oh, like I emailed him a couple months ago. Do I have a syllabus or do I just wait? Oh, I'm no, you'll have a box in the lab, so you can start working on that box. So your team number, there'll be a box in the lab. Okay. So just start working on that. Um, and if he doesn't reply, by maybe like beginning, probably by like Saturday, since okay. just like join that Facebook message, Brandon and Min, and they'll change your teams. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. That's where they're very flexible, that team, so. So for, um, uh, uh, what you have uh, stuff, like, uh, do I just go in with uh, myself, like, and all the instruction is online? There's a lot of instructions. They post a lot of documents, so. Okay. It'll be pretty well laid out for you to understand. Yeah, sure. Thanks. No problem. Have a good night. Oh, what are you doing with that? Very cool. Marking the people. What's that now? No. no. Okay, yeah. Just mark all the cash, though. So. Oh, I didn't. Oh, no, I, did, I marked people who gave me Venmo as gave us the deposit. Okay, that's fine. Uh, right now, there's only two of us in our team. What? Because people did 100 and then 50. That's fine, yeah. But I did look at everyone's. Yeah, yeah. there are only two people in our team right now. Two people? Yes. Oh, what team? Team 9. Team 9? Uh, yeah. If, 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 if you can find a third person somewhere, like, oh, okay. Okay. next week. Yeah. Um, find okay. Them, then. okay, let me just mark that down. Um, I mean, we aren't sure. I mean, okay. submit the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that was one downside from the application okay. yeah, that we didn't that, consider. Um, just yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Cool. You guys are good. Team six, right? Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you do Blinky? Is it Blinky? I'm waiting for my What team are you? I'm just curious. Team? Uh, I'm not sure. So this has to, my name is Michelle. Michelle. It has Albert. Albert? Albert is the first time. Yeah. Alright, here, team five. Did you guys submit your deposit? No, not yet. Um, okay. 
Uh, one of my teammates just dropped out, so we didn't. Um, uh, would you like another team? Yeah, we have to search for it. Okay. Um, um, okay. Let me, yeah, we, we can we can accommodate that. Um, we have a lot of people in front of the Oh, okay. Team 10. Team 10 also needs to Okay, yeah, I'm going to post tonight that um, just message me if you guys want another teammate, but if I already have you marked down, then. Team 10 wants to find another? Yeah, there's a lot of team um, yeah. support right now. I just talked to the girl you just talked right now, and she said they would join us if your <laughs> teammate doesn't show. Yeah. Okay. Please. And then, um, just if you guys pay, if you, there's only two of you, and then you guys pay 150, we will give you back 25 each. Um, so that the other person pays the, the last 50. So um, you guys will still pay the 50 each, even uh -huh. if you pay the deposit now. Uh, 75 and 75. Okay. So, uh, um, okay. Oh, and what's the memo? The memo is uh, actually at UCLA. Okay. Yeah. 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 You do. So first, the floating is really easy on the previous person. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you can do is you can change the value. Yeah. Automatic sound with it, and then the ring file. So you pick that file, drag it to the for the second half or something. It works like a flash when you connect it. Oh. So yeah. 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 Yeah
Two people, it's easier to me, not that it works together, but two people, it's more fun. Yeah. 